Good morning, everyone. Make sure the numbers are still counting. Order on the podium. My name is Chad Blevins, uh, and I'm Dan Castro, uh, and we work for Okana, which is a geospatial and technology company with offices in Seattle, Denver, and uh, London. Uh, you, many of you may remember us from our former company name, Critigen. We've been participating in State of the Map conferences over the last couple of years. Uh, January of this year, the company decided to rebrand from Critigen to Locana. So, same great people doing the same great work, just have a new name. Um, we're a largely remote company, and we are hiring for any of you people out there looking for a fully remote job. Um, yeah, be sure to talk to us after the presentation. <clears throat> so, um, you know, how many folks have ever run into like a dangerous situation on a trail, right? Uh, whether it be a bike trail, hiking trail, or what have you. Um, I think that last presentation on bike trails, you know, gave some great examples of situations that may, you know, people think that they're, they're a fairly safe situation, but in reality they're not, right? Um, and so as avid trail users and trail lovers, um, we've all run into these situations on the team and that's kind of what pulled, pulled together a few of us from Locana that says, hey, we want to really analyze some of these trail data that's out there and you know, see, what, see what's happening. I, I literally took this picture myself on the local bike trail um, in WNOD that goes from Vienna to DC, for any of you all familiar. Obviously, I have no idea what this motorist was thinking. Their car is as wide as the trail. And somehow they were driving down it far enough to where the police were called, and um, you know came, came and met them halfway. Um, and it's not the only time I've seen a car on the bike trail. It's it's uh, kind of surprising how often that actually happens. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to briefly introduce introduce the OSM US Trail Access Project for uh, any of you unfamiliar with that, Diana Fritz gave a good presentation overview on that yesterday. Um, but for folks who aren't familiar, this project started from a Mappy Hour presentation given by, given by Kerry Nelson from um, National Parks Service in Utah. Uh, this was last fall and she gave this awesome presentation that kind of showed some of the challenges that the National Park Service was facing with social trails. So those are trails that aren't designated trails that are maintained by the Park Service or any other public land, but people are actually using. So it might be, you know, like a little hike out to, uh, you know, a nice overlook or something. It could be like walking through a dangerous scree field, or it could be walking through an environmentally sensitive area that so people are actually destroying these areas the more they hike through or uh, in some cases going to you know, cultural heritage sites and those types of things. So they're generally areas that the Park Service does not want people walking on for various reasons and their safety is actually one of them, right? So if you walk off on a trail that's, that the Park Service and people aren't looking after or maintaining um, and you get hurt, right? It, you, they might not think to look there first because it's not a trail that you should be hiking on. Um, so the uh, Trail Access Project work, working group came together and yep, Diana right there is um, the chair. And really there's three main objectives. One is to sort of look at all these different tagging schemas that are out there and find the most appropriate for every situation. And this isn't that easy to do because National Park Service, Forest Service, BLM, like state and local, right? They all have different trails that have different designations. So trying to find a scheme that's going to work across the board is almost impossible. But that's one of the objectives of this working group. And they're actually making some pretty good headway there. Um, the other you know, thing is to identify official data sets for these parks. So you can actually have your, uh, your something to compare to OpenStreetMap to say, hey, all right, these are the official trails. and now we have a sense of um, you know, the trails that are maintained, and then we'll have to tag all these other ones differently. And then you know, the third is really just to bring the community together to improve trail tagging, right? It's not something that's gonna happen overnight. Everyone uses these trails, and so we have to kind of map together to make sure that we get the tagging straight and um, improve the, the quality and um, yeah, the quality of the, of the tagging in these areas. 
So, uh, this was hard. We were like, you know, we have this big country, we all have trails that we use and love, but we had to focus on a couple key areas. Um, we decided, you know, we consulted with the working group. They gave us some suggestions. We looked around, and these are the four areas that we cited on. We picked two national parks um, and two national forests. Um, represented Arizona here since we're in Arizona with Grand Canyon and uh, Tonto National Forest and then also in Colorado the San Juan National Forest and Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, for each of these areas you know we knew that there was a decent US government provided um, database. There's also a state level database where they maintain and look at all the trails in their state, so there's another version there, and then of course there's OpenStreetMap, right? So there's multiple versions of these trail databases floating out there, um, and so we decided our approach basically took, you know, we, we didn't look at the state level data sets, we just looked at the national level data that were provided, um, you know, brought that into QGIS, used a quick OSM plugin, downloaded some of the OSM data, and then from there started our analysis and worked through some of the different tagging schemas to identify, you know, sanctioned trails versus these social trails and try to get some metrics to, to understand, you know, where and why things were going wrong. Um, yep. Well, thank you, Chad. Uh, so, <clears throat> when we started this project, we were trying to stick through with the original uh, tagging schema based on the, on the wiki page and the working group, uh, but when we started to look into the trails, we weren't really finding a lot of data, either for official or social, uh, so what we did is we kind of like loosened up and kind of changed uh, the tagging schema. Uh, so for official trails, we actually got rid of the operator tag and uh, the access tags. So uh, what is official trail would just be anything that's highway equals path and has a name tag. And then the uh, data sources uh, that we uh, use for uh, the government, uh, for the uh, National Park Service and the US uh, Forest Service. And then for social trails, we actually added a couple tags uh, just to broaden the uh, amount of trails. And so we added highway equals footway, and we added access equals private, or access equals permissive, or access equals permit, which was actually a big um, increase in number of uh, social trails by using that um, tag. So here are some uh, use cases of social trails that we found throughout the, the project. Um, on the left-hand side, there are two uh, red social trails, and then the brown trails are OSM official trails. Uh, the trail marked as A is what we're considering a floating trail. Uh, that's kind of just a trail that's not part of any other trail network. And then the uh, trail labeled B is just like a one-off uh, social trail that's connected to uh, official trail network. Um, but one of the more common use cases that we found is the one on the right hand side. Uh, so you, as you can see the one labeled C is a social trail. And these are kind of like gaps in between a long um, trail of other official trails. Um, but this could be too because of the way that we decided to do our tagging. Um, so, and also to kind of a point as to why we need to like also identify what is official and what is not official. All right, so let's dig into some of the findings and uh, metrics. So for social trails, one of the uh, largest in length uh, that we found uh, was the access equals permit, which was a little under 40 miles. Um, and again, this access equals permit doesn't necessarily mean that it's restricted, uh, but maybe just needing some type of permit to access these trails. Um, and then uh, informal equals yes was the other uh, kind of uh, large amount of uh, trails that we found. Uh, but altogether, um, we found about 67 miles of social trails. And then kind of comparing uh, official trails of uh, government data versus OSM data, there was actually about 400 miles more of uh, government data compared to OSM data. Uh, so if you look at the image on the right, uh, a lot of it does overlap, a lot of it is the same between both OSM and uh, the government data. Uh, but you can see there is some like areas in the upper right hand corner that are just government data, but then there are also some other areas where there's just uh, like the brown OSM uh, trails. 
All right, so from this conclusion uh, and efforts from the US OSM Trail Access Project um, have thus far uh, minimized uh, social and official trail interaction. So only about 2.5 miles worth of social trails overlapped or intersected government trails and about 30 miles worth of social trails overlapped OSM official trails. Um, and this is mostly due to like the loosening of our tagging criteria. Um, and then the image on the right is uh, from the working group and kind of just showing that some of these uh, trails uh, illegally navigate hikers to like sensitive sites or areas. So how can we improve this process? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we looked at a lot of the national parks and forests, um, but uh, with that, we weren't able to find too many social trails based off the original uh, wiki tagging. Um, and so I think a good way to kind of start the project off would be we're like looking at where are these social trails at based off of the original um, tagging schema. Um, and then also looking at other types of sources of data to compare OSM to, so maybe other, um, maybe state level data, or um, uh, we were also looking at um, uh, all trails, shout out to, to all trails. Um, and then also just evolving and continuing to work on the tagging criteria. Um, we all know how uh, controversial tagging could be, uh, you know, within the OSM community. Uh, so just being more cohesive and attuned to uh, the tagging uh, would be a great way to improve the process. Um, and with this, this should lead to more scenarios where social trails are easier to identify and don't overlap official trails. Uh, so how to scale our approach, um, adding more areas of focus. Um, I mean, really this can be done anywhere. If there's a park in your city that has trails, uh, looking into that, or even something as grand as the Grand Canyon. Um, and then another approach is uh, creating MapRoulette challenges. Uh, how many of you are familiar with MapRoulette? Okay, so quite a, quite a few uh, are familiar. Um, but for those of you who don't know what MapRoulette is, it's a, a tool for OSM to kind of go in and create checks and it's like a way to enhance OSM data. Um, and in this example, the working group has actually created a uh, challenge for uh, tagging of official trails, and this is out in uh, Lake Chelan, Washington. Um, so happy trails, and uh, thank you all for attending our presentation.